Hello, I'm Tom Wilkinson, a second year social and political science student, and today we've got Dr. Mary Holmes and our very own uh, Nathan Manning. Mary's from the University of Edinburgh, and obviously Nathan's from the University of York. So what is it that you're going to be talking to us about today? Uh, we're going to talk about our project on um, political dissatisfaction, and we did a small quantitative study in Yorkshire and the North East, and we talked to people about how they feel about mainstream politics, and we particularly tried to um, get people who were not interested in politics to, to talk to us. Often, it, I've always thought it's perceived as an issue of the political science realm. Mm. So you're looking at it from a, a sociological, you're putting on sociological spectacles, if mm. you will. How, how, what is the difference? Like, could mm. you just explain that a little bit? Yeah, it's a good question. <clears throat> um, I think, uh, sort of, kind of following on from what Mary was saying, I mean, part of what we wanted to do was actually go out and ask people, you know, about their experience of politics. Um, and if they were disengaged, not everybody we spoke to was, you know, some of the people were quite interested in politics and did vote regularly. But if they didn't vote and weren't interested in politics, then why was that? You know, were they able to provide an account for that or did they just completely disregard politics? Um, so I think a, a sort of qualitative approach is one of the, the key things that we bring to this. We've got quite a lot of um, quantitative survey-based sort of evidence around um you know, who votes and who's interested in politics and these kinds of things. Um, but getting at that that sort of qualitative level helps pick up some of the depth and the nuance that's going on. So I think that's one of the key things um, to our approach. Other than perhaps the rise of um, f fundamentalist mm. parties, um, what other factors sort of come into play? You know, the television or what, other, what are these other factors that contribute to the debate? Well, the, I guess that the, a lot of the work around um, political disengagement has, has focused on um, Putman's work uh, uh, about, um, you know, bowling alone, about supposedly the breakdown of community and the way in which citizens are, are not engaged in their, in their local communities and therefore uh, not interested in uh, what's going on there and aren't participating politically. And we think there's a problem with that kind of analysis. And he, he Putnam, has famously kind of blames television as being one of the kind of key factors in that. But we would suggest that that's a little bit too simplistic and also that it actually blames the uh, citizens uh, for being lazy and apathetic yeah. and so on. And we want to sort of shift that and say, well, hang on a minute, why might people feel so disinterested or uninterested and disconnected from uh, from politics and some of the factors we highlight are things like they're feeling like there's a political elite that governs who has no um, real connection with the the ordinary person so that's that's one of the key things that they that they talk about and also that politicians are not addressing the kind of socio-economic disadvantage which is a major factor in their everyday lives. So, <clears throat> for a second year sociology, mm. a social and political science student, were what what is the future? Like, what is the path mm. of how we can reinvigorate our democracy, as particularly for young people? Again, it's a really difficult question. I think that it's a push that has to come from young people. Yeah. I don't think that the older generation of politicians can tell them what they should be doing and should be interested in and, and one of the things that I find very heartening as a sociologist is seeing uh, a generation of uh, students after some time of uh, quiescence <laughs> uh, becoming much more politically active again so it does seem that young people are out there doing things and, and reshaping uh, the political landscape and you know I think that the impetus is is got to come from from young people and the answers are going to have to come from them not from those of us who are just kind of trying to analyze what's wrong at the moment <laughs> to, to give them perhaps some information to, to start with but I think that's our our role as sociologists is not necessarily to always know what the the future might be. We're very scared often of predicting the future, but to say, okay, what kinds of questions might we want to ask about 
the political system at the moment and how might those questions help young people think about where they need to go and how they might reinvigorate the, the political landscape. And I think there's actually, by the way, something <laughs> amazing that the future is in our hands and it's, that's the beauty yeah. of mm. social and political sciences, yeah. actually. But, yeah. but anyway, thank you very much. <laughs> You're welcome. And, uh,